Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome back to part seven, where we're going to continue building out our backend for our website based on this mockup here. In the previous sections, we completed the top navigation, the banner, the footer found on the bottom of our website, and we started working on this landing page. And in the previous video, we completed the hero section and set up the basic process for us able to add new components to our dynamic zone. So in today's video, we're going to continue by creating the heading section and our cart section that we're going to add to our backend and be able to get via our API. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start with this section component. And if we take a look here, we have our subheader and our header. And maybe we want to give ability for folks to be able to add an anchor link in a navigation that will link to the section. So if you wanted to have a single page app where the top navigation allows you to navigate to the different section in your blog post, we're also going to add an anchor link. So let's go ahead and build this component in Strapi. I already have my Strapi application running. So we're going to go ahead and navigate to our content type builder. And we're going to create a new component. This is going to be parts of our blocks collection. So let's go ahead and select blocks. And we're going to call this section heading. Let's go ahead, click continue. And our component has a subheading. So let's go ahead and let's add it. We're going to say text sub heading and that's going to be short text let's add another field and now we're going to add our heading text so we are again going to make it a short text and we're going to say heading just like this and let's add another field we're going to select text and we're going to call this anchor link and this is if you want to add a anchor ID to allow folks to navigate to that section from a navigation. And we'll talk more about this when we build out the front end, but at least we want to be able to represent this data and make sure that we get it in our request from our API. So let's go ahead and click finish. Here we have a subheading heading anchor link looks good. Let's click save. Now we are going to navigate to our landing page. In the block section, click the add component button. We're going to use existing component and let's select our section heading here. Go ahead and click finish and save. Now that we have our section component, let's go ahead to our content manager. In our landing page, we already have our hero block with our content. Let's go ahead, add another component. Now our section heading is going to be available to us. Let's click on it and let's add our data. And I'm going to pull this from our section here. I'm going to grab the subheading and you could fill it in with whatever you like. And then I'm also going to grab our heading here. And the anchor link, I'm going to leave blank because it's not mandatory, but in the future, we'll see how we utilize this. So now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and click publish. In our previous lectures, we learned about our route middleware and we decided that we want to add all of our populated logic there. So here we're going to now populate our hero section. So right after block hero, we're going to say blocks dot section heading and we're going to say true. And if you're wondering how do I know that it's block section heading, taking a look in our application and we could find this in our content type builder. If we take a look at our blocks, we have our blocks folder, which has our section heading. And basically that's how we know we could reference this in our application. Blocks is the folder that it's found and section heading is the name of our component. So now that we added this change because we had all of this set up from our previous field, if we go to Postman and we make a new get request, to localhost 1337, our endpoint is landing page, exactly what we did in the past. So let me make this bigger so we could see. And if we click send, notice that we're getting all of our data. And for our blocks, 
we're getting our block hero section and we're also getting our section heading with our subheading heading and anchor link is null because we didn't add a value nice and notice now that we have our pattern we are able to quickly add new component blocks to our strapi application so now let's continue by adding this card now if we take a look at this we're going to have two different components one it's going to be a component that's going to have all the cards but we're also going to have a card component which is going to have this text and body text so let's go ahead and create it and maybe we might want to use this card somewhere else we're going to put it inside our shared folder so in our strap application we are already in our content builder let's create a new component we're going to call it card and that's going to live in our shared folder let's go ahead and click continue our card is going to have two fields text short text this is going to be a heading and let's add another field we're going to select the text field long text and we're going to call it text really original now we're going to go ahead and finish and save in the future if you want you could expand this by adding an image or an icon or a link but for now we're just going to keep it simple now we're going to create a component to hold multiple number of these cards so let's go ahead click on create new component we're going to call it card grid and we're going to select our blocks and click continue and all this is going to have is going to have a component and here we're just going to click on use existing component select component and we're going to select our card we're going to call it cards because you're going to have multiple and it's going to be our repeatable component and the reason why it's a repeatable component if we take a look in our application we have one two three four multiple cards and so this is a repeatable component because you're going to have multiple different columns with the card and that's why we're going to specify repeatable component boy did i say a lot of times but now that that's done let's go ahead click finish and save now that we have our card grid we are going to go ahead into our landing page add another component and we're going to grab our card grid and click finish save and now we're going to navigate to our content manager go to our landing page and we're going to click add component and notice our card grid is now available when we take a look we have our cards where we're able to add that individual card component so let's go ahead and add four cards i'm going to grab the text here but you could make up whatever you like i'm just going to do that to make it much easier for me now i'm going to add another entry and this is going to be the second card and again here you could add whatever data you want i'm just going off uh, this template that i have here add another entry and we're going to add the third item and then i'm going to add this and think of this as a figma design that i may, may be working off and finally let's grab the last one here cool and now that this is done i'm going to go ahead save and publish and again if i want to show this card grid component already the pattern that we set up back in our landing page populate middleware here i'm going to go ahead and say blocks dot card grid and this time we do have to specify populate because if we take a look in our shapi application if we look in our content type builder in our card grid here this cards because it's a component it is a relationship and we learned that whenever we need to show another relationship we have to tell strapi specifically that we want to do that so here that's why we're saying populate the relationship is cards and we're going to say true now that this is done if we navigate back to postman and we run this request now taking a look at our response we see our previous hero section then we see our section heading that we just created 
And finally, we also see our card grid with all of the data coming from our API. Nice, so we're making some serious progress. We're continuing to build out our landing page. And let's do just a quick review. Taking a look at our website, we have our landing page, which consists of different types of blocks of data. The first thing we did in our Strapi application is we created a single type called landing page to be responsible for storing that data. We started with a title and description, and then each individual component that we're adding to represent our website data, we broke it down into separate components. We have our hero component, we have our heading, and our card grid. And that's exactly what we have here, our hero, section heading, card grid. And we created these individual components to represent the data that we wanna share on our landing page, which live here in the block section. So if we take a look at the hero section, this content structure represents the data that's found in our hero section. Once we created all those different blocks, we made sure to add them to our landing page. And we're going to continue this process by finishing up the site, the few last things that we have to do. We have to create this section with image and text. Then we will create our text section, a person card, and a couple of more items, including the Q&A and our featured block section. And finally, finish with the form. With that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Go grab another break and I will talk to you in the next section.